Good morning, wrestling fans, and welcome to PWR Today, Wednesday morning. It's March 16th, 2022. The man to call Meathead out on the road like uh, Rod Zombie and uh, the L.A. Rats, joined by Matthew Thomas. Good morning, Matthew. Or you could be on the road like Willie Nelson, or maybe you're like a, you're kind of a combination between Willie Nelson and Rob Zombie, is what you are. If there was any person that I was farther away from, it's a combination of Willie Nelson and Rob Zombie. I don't think I'm either one of those. Now, Willie Nelson is, you know, on the road again. And then Rob Zombie is in a band called L.A. Rats doing I've Been Everywhere, Man, which is a cover not of Johnny Cash's song. Johnny Cash covered the song of a man from Australia doing an I've Been Everywhere, Man song. Fantastic. Uh, I don't think that I realized that. So you're getting all kinds of musical nuggets dropped on you here this well, morning. Well, I'll drop but, a know, nugget every once in a while. <laughs> but here's the thing, Meathead. You're out on the road, and you know I'm sure you prepare for all kinds of stuff when you're out on the road. You probably got you know a disaster kit. You got a first. You got a first aid kit back there. You probably got several changing of clothes. So let me put this question to you: If you see A disabled vehicle on the road, you stop, and there is a pregnant woman about to give birth, and you deliver the baby, you cut the cord, and you have to wrap the baby in some of your spare clothes. What are you going to be wrapping that baby in, Meathead? Well, that's ironic that you'd say that, because I am wearing some collar and elbow. Uh, Collarandelbowbrand.com. You know, it's the latest in street fashion when it comes to wrestling gear. And if you want to save yourself 10% on Collar and Elbow Brand, uh, make sure you use the promo code Linda K L I N D A. K-A-Y. That's Linda K. Saves you 10% over at CollarAndElbowBrand.com. Fantastic. And, uh, you know, this has been a very somber week with uh, a lot of not great news. And I want to hopefully throw a little bit of optimism out there. Some very good news today in in regards to Big E. It is being reported by none other than Big E himself after suffering his broken neck on Friday on SmackDown. Big E is back at home just a few days after suffering uh, a broken neck. So we do have some bright, positive spots in the world of wrestling today, Meathead. Yeah, you know, I I don't know if it was a tweet or it was Instagram or, uh, you know, Pinterest or, you know, Fluffer or whatever, you know, site that Big E uses. But Fluffer. I know that he... Yeah, I know that he put out a video and he said, you know, if anything, if I'm going to get hurt, if I'm going to get hurt and break my neck, I'm glad I broke it in Birmingham, Alabama with the wonderful Dr. James Andrews and his team who have taken care of so many wrestlers and professional athletes. No, and when I first read that news and I read that uh, quote, I had to step back and look, wait a minute, did he get transferred to Birmingham? Is he he down there already? And then it dawned on me, that's where the actual... Event took place. So my goodness, I mean, some fortunate uh, in regards to being in that location there. Uh, So glad to hear Big E is is back at home. And uh, of course, the future remains unclear for Big E, but uh, certainly glad the situation wasn't any worse than it was on Friday night. Uh, We also have some other news coming from the world of AEW. Reports are in that uh, this previous AEW pay-per-view a revolution set to become the number two highest grossing AEW pay-per-view of all time. Apparently, there has been a lot of uh, delayed buys, a lot of people buying the pay-per-view after the fact. Who knows? Maybe they had some Bleacher Report issues. Uh, Bleacher Report, for me, worked better this time, <laughs> but it was still not foolproof, man. Um, so let me give you, we you know, we got to our, our AEW recap late, so uh, we didn't get to go over the bells and whistles of what I ran into with Bleach Report this past time, but uh, better in the fact that I could pause it, could rewind it, could fast forward it. However, my progress bar was there initially when I restarted, when I started the show, but the second that fast forward is hit, you're fast forwarding blind. And I checked this on the replay. I checked this after the pay-per-view ended as well too. Um, No fast forward progress bar. You are hitting fast forward and you're just guessing where you're at. That's amazing. I mean, that's kind of what the WWE network was when you were hitting fast forward two, four, eight, you know, uh, 16, 32, 64. You were just guessing. You didn't see it, you know, skimming like a DVR and you know, and then stop. So you were just guessing. 
And, and I'll take this a step further too. Like not only are you guessing with this, you, you don't even know what speed you're going at. You don't know what minute mark you're going at. Bleacher Report lost that, at least on the Roku end of the spectrum, uh, did not have that functionality for this last pay-per-view. So uh, my goodness, I know, uh, I know there's the talk of the deal with uh, AEW and Discover and somebody HBO buying Max. ads. Yeah, not in uh, Discovery. I'm sorry, not Discovered the credit card company, although that might not be a, a bad deal. But my goodness, some <laughs> streaming service no, come in. Discovery and HBO Max went together. Yeah. My goodness, somebody come in and, and let's change the way we watch uh, our AEW pay-per-views. But okay. nonetheless, uh, you know, on track to become the number uh, two highest grossing AEW uh, pay-per-view of of all time and uh i know you guys touched on it yesterday uh, but my goodness um you know i don't think enough can be said about the passing of scott hall uh that was the very unfortunate news that we alluded to uh earlier in the show um but you know it's hard to say anything that hasn't been said thus far i mean you talk about somebody absolutely changing the industry uh, him and Nash going to WCW um, in what is still to this day, I think, the greatest professional wrestling angle of all time, uh, not just from a creative standpoint, but they changed the way that guys got paid. Um, it's the lasting effects of, of Scott Hall's career. Uh, I don't think it can be be talked about enough. And one thing that's happened here in the last several days, my goodness, uh, you're just seeing so many stories, so many a, a clip that I forgot about Meathead. Have you ever seen the uh, the Scott Hall or, or Razor Ramon because he was in the character of Razor Ramon on Sp- on Springer? Have you seen that clip? Springer or was it Sally Jesse Raphael? No, it was Springer, and he was on there with two 10 year old kids that had eight and one of the kids was a razor ramon fan so he was brought on as the special guest um it's worth your time six seven minute clip go out and check this out and this is mid 90s and uh you know really what really what stands out to me you know when he has the interaction with the kids the first thing he does to the little girl he kisses the little girl and you know we're in the night mid 90s so there is Unfortunately, still a lot of stigma attached as far as, you know, personal contact at that point. Sure. Um, you know, it's, it's Scott Hall going above and beyond the little things to uh, really make these kids feel good and basically convey something to a larger uh, to a larger television television audience. And here's one interesting little tidbit from from me personally. Um, one little side note, it was a Razor Ramon t-shirt. That was the first time that inspired me to have the first conversation with a stranger about professional wrestling that I ever had. So I was, my inauguration to the professional wrestling party was in the mid nineties. It was in the middle of Brett is champion. It was in the middle of the Razor Ramon intercontinental run. And this was this was the time when this was right before Austin took off and you saw your Austin 316 shirts at Walmart and you saw them popping up everywhere. This was in between the Hogan run and before the Austin run. So you really did not see a lot of professional wrestling memorabilia anywhere. But I distinctly remember walking down the street in Virginia Beach, Virginia. On vacation, seeing another kid about my age in the classic 1990s uh, Razor Ramon shirt, the yellow and the black and the white shirt, uh, you know, the print and the logo all over the shirt. And, you know, going up to the guy and complimenting him on his shirt and and talking for a a brief little while, having as as involved of a conversation as a nine or 10 year old could uh, at that given time. But, you know, that that memory still sticks with me to this day. You know, it's funny you say that because um, there was a stigma before, let's say, Scott Hall moved over to the NWO and to WCW. There was a stigma that, oh, that dude's got a wrestling T-shirt on. Only other wrestling fans would notice it and say, hey, that's really cool. I mean, really, modern media or, you know, the uh, you know the uh, popular media still stood away from it. It's that fake wrestling. But... I mean, when it came to Scott Hall, when he joined the NWO, 
uh, Scott Hall made wearing wrestling gear cool. The Outsiders. I mean, he had the you know NWO T-shirt, and you know I I saw something from X Pac. You know Sean Waltman, who we're going to see down in shenanigans down in uh, Dallas. He said, you know, when he was out with his broken neck, Scott Hall wore his shirt the whole time. He wore that mm. green six ball shirt, you know, with the six pack on it. Yeah, uh, yeah. So, you know, if he didn't mention him in his promos, he wore his T-shirt. That shirt was cool as hell. Yeah. No, with, uh, with that, that, interestingly enough, speaking of that specific shirt that you referenced, I was actually in Atlanta about a decade ago at – basically their comic con dragon con and i think we remember seeing that that xbox shirt there uh in atlanta so that shirt still being worn i say today it seems like it was today it was a decade ago but you know decades yeah. close <laughs> enough to today well speaking no, of i mean today, you know what's that far uh, removed yeah yeah it's today it's or that far removed Today or last night, or whatever you want to call it, man, we did have some NXT action, and uh, this NXT recap is going to sound very odd. It's going to sound like an NXT fever dream because it's a uh, it's a little bit different than your normal NXT show. I'm gonna I'm gonna just say NXT tonight because that's what my guide calls it now. My guide doesn't call it NXT 2.0, um, and there's still okay. there's still some NXT 2.0. Uh, graphics in the show but i think we might actually finally be getting back to nxt as it's uh as it's called not the nxt 2.0 but strangely enough tonight or last night's nxt rather opens up with ms tv featuring your new nxt Wait, champion ms tv that's right opening the show ms uh down at the old nxt arena and uh yeah he's got the new nxt champion dolph ziggler accompanied by Big Bob in the ring to have a very special conversation. What, what do you think about that open to NXT meet, Ed? Um, Yeah, you know, Fever Dream is the right thing to say because what the hell are we doing here? You know, you yeah. sent me that picture of your banner on your DVR saying NXT and it didn't say 2.0. I didn't know that it was, you know, kind of a precursor to having half of WWE's main yeah. talent roster shown up on uh, NXT 2.0. Because didn't they get rid of the guys that were indie-rific and want to start with brand new? It was a training ground, and now they fill the show with half of the uh, Raw yeah. SmackDown roster. Yeah, no, that's exactly uh, where we're going. And I will say, uh, first of all, we are told early on that Braun Breaker will not be there tonight, which you know that means Braun Breaker will ultimately be there. We went to some security camera footage of Breaker uh, trying to attack Ziggler earlier, but here's what I want to point out about this meathead. Braun Breaker driving the NXT Community Dodge Challenger. That's right. WWE <laughs> turned, what, a billion dollar in profit? And it, for anyway, for NXT, there's apparently one car they share. It is that Dodge, that black Dodge Challenger. We used to that see was Damian Priest's car. Yeah. yeah, but before him, it was Damian Priest's car. Yeah, so exactly. here's the thing. At the very least, give me like a little spinoff series on the network or Peacock or something about the lineage of this car. You know, so I guess Priest brought, bought it and eventually sold it to Cross. And then at least I don't think this is what LA, LA Knight was driving when he was attacked. I think he was in a Did Camaro or something. Ah, that's a good question. You know, we, we did not see the plates last night with the security camera footage. Uh, so that's, that's still in question, but yeah, that same black Dodge challenger uh, made an appearance again, this time in the possession of Braun breaker, Thank man. You. That, that is like the NWO black Hummer. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But I, I will say this, meathead, you know, if one thing that we've learned over the last seven or eight months, man, the, uh, the shortage with the chips and the new, the new car market, used car market, I mean, vehicles are hard to come by now. So, I mean, I NXT is probably doing the, the best they can with that, uh, you know, with their, their community, with their community challenger. And uh, anyway, so we, we did see him earlier in the day as barred from the arena. This would actually lead to Ziggler being challenged by none other than L.A. Knight. And here's the thing. Yeah. We are – I am a little bit critical of bringing down your main roster talent, but this is the image that we had to start off the show. We had LA Knight in the ring with Ms. Ziggler and Bobby Roode, and my goodness, he looked like he belonged. This looked like four elite-level superstars in that ring together. 
Uh, so I'm just my what I'm hoping here is that the brass, the powers that be see this and see the way he comes across with these main roster guys. And hopefully that, uh, you know, pushes him up the ladder a little bit quicker. It would push him up the ladder later last night in the fact that they did schedule Ziggler and L.A. Knight for the main event of the show. L.A. Knight belongs. L.A. Knight is a former world champion for Impact Wrestling. Uh, the fact that he really hasn't gotten that shot yet uh, is kind of alarming, you know, especially because NXT 2.0 is supposed to be all new talent, and then there's L.A. Knight. Yeah. We would also see the first of our qualifying matches for NXT Stand and Deliver for the um, for the North American title ladder match at the pay-per-view. Uh, we would see Santos Escobar going up against Cameron Grimes and uh, Escobar getting the clean win over Grimes. We would later have Grimes in a promo uh, very, very dejected, saying the latest thing, the last thing he promised his father while his father was alive was that he was going to be an NXT champion. Now Grimes is going into NXT Stand and Deliver with no match. Uh, so very interesting where this ends or where this leads to for the, uh, the Cameron Grimes arc here. Cameron Grimes can be in the stand and deliver Andre the Giant Battle Royal Memorial, you know the William Regal Memorial Battle Royal or whatever they're gonna do at stand and deliver. Is he gonna is he gonna wrestle Cody? I don't know. <laughs> I have no idea. I mean, it's be, not those guys haven't. It's not that those guys haven't worked together before. When he was Trevor yeah. Lee, Cody Rhodes was in Impact Wrestling. Yeah, no, that's very true. Um, but. Uh, Still trying to figure out where the Cameron Grimes piece falls into the equation for Stan and Deliver. Uh, So last night would be filled with many, many backstage promos of Cora Jade uh, taking out – not taking out Toxic Attraction, taking their titles and attempting to take out Toxic Attraction. Uh, Was there any sound effects – was there sound effects going on there? So there was Meathead, and you are going to be absolutely disgusted by this. You might need to pull over. Is there a rest area anywhere nearby? Not anywhere nearby. You know, when I figured out if I was going to have to use the restroom, you know, I said, well, it depends. And then I moved on. (laughs) I, I bet you. I bet you did. I bet you did. Anyway, so the sound effect that we got was the very first backstage segment that we saw where we saw that Cora Jade had in her possession the tag titles and the NXT women's title. And she had them uh, hanging around a post or something. So she took the first two down. They were loot pretty easy. The third meathead, she was struggling with. This was the NXT women's title. She was struggling with it. And she had to put some effort to unvelcro the title. So you got a very... Very distinct. This was the most audible I've ever heard the Velcro on any of the titles. You got a very, very distinct uh, un-Velcroing. So what this would result in, this would result in Cora Jade, I'm doing air quotes with my fingers, capturing two members of Toxic Attraction, um, one via a cage, one via a dumpster. And then finally, she was ultimately outsmarted by Mandy Rose. Who attacked Good. in the parking lot? <laughs> and and we're going uh, Cora J and Mandy Rose at Stand and Deliver, which I got to say, Meathead, this sounds like kind of a quick uh, shoehorn into the title scene for as much potential as I think Cora Jade has. This program has, uh, has come together very, very quick. I swear to God, this sounds like the Roadrunner and Wiley Coyote. This is ridiculous. <laughs> I think it might have been an Acme uh, trash dump now that I think of it. Well, that's probably it was an Acme title belt because, you know, a real title belt wouldn't have Velcro. Yeah, um, we did have the premiere of a kid of NXT UK fame going up against Kushida from my favorite NXT tag team jacket time. Now, Kushida did not did they wash their hands. I, I don't know. But Kushida uh, did not wrestle in his jacket. I was a little bit disappointed by that because, I mean, that's what I like the most about jacket time is the jacket. But. A kid looking promising in his um, in his premiere, and uh, actually he's got himself, I believe, a a, uh, a match next week to qualify 
for the uh, NXT North American title ladder match. So he is only one match away from uh, going to stand and deliver uh, one A kid. This is where it uh, it got a little bit strange. Again, we had Santos Escobar in the back with the rest of uh, uh, Legado del Fantasma, and we, they're interrupted by Dominic and Rey Mysterio um, on our TV programs what? for NXT. Did you did you expect to tune into NXT last night and see Dominic and Rey? No, but you know what? Kind of like Shawn Michaels and Triple H put in the Spirit Squad in a trunk sending him back to OVW, this is where Ray needs to forget to take Dominic with him and leave Dominic at NXT. Yeah. Yeah, and maybe that's where they're going. Um, Dominic, this would set up a, a match later on with him and Roel Mendoza, Dominic picking up the win. So maybe Dominic just stays there. I mean, maybe this is the way of riding Dominic onto NXT. I, I didn't necessarily I, think about it that way, but yeah. my goodness, that would not be a half bad idea. You know, again, he's not getting sent off to OVW like the Spirit Squad did. But you know what? Ray can just say, oh, I'm sorry. I forgot to pick you up. And I, I drove off and I had to go meet up. So you hang out down here for a while. Not a bad idea at all. Um, one of our uh, key, most newsworthy moments last night, we would have a Tommaso Ciampa promo. And it takes a little bit of time. He comes out and sits on the turnbuckle. And he's very reflective. He wants to talk about gratitude. And this ultimately brings out various thank you, Ciampa, please don't go chance. And uh, he, he basically tells everybody that he is searching for the perfect fairy tale ending. Uh, so you got to wonder, is this him riding off into the sunset? Or is this the Mark Henry retirement speech where he then attacks John oh, Mark Cena? Mark Henry one was great. Um, no, this is Ciampa going up to the big brand. So uh, that's what that's what would be very, very uh, possible to see. I mean, Ciampa in the past, not necessarily seemingly being a fan of, of going up. But I think when you're looking at guys that could make a huge difference on that main roster there, my goodness. I mean, that is that's one of the big names. But. He would then be interrupted by uh, Tony D'Angelo. Tony D'Angelo first uh, challenges him to a match, saying that he wants to be his uh, his fair, you know, his perfect. <laughs> he didn't say he wanted to be his perfect fairy tale. I'm I'm kind of implying that, but it would be a yeah, lot better. I, I, it's getting D'Angelo. a little weird if you ask me. I think he wanted to say he was going to be his Huckleberry. I'm your Huckleberry. <laughs> you know, Matthew Thomas booking this. How you actually book this a lot better is you have Tony D'Angelo showing up and saying, hey, Tommaso, I want to be your fairy tale, all right? So maybe they can do that yeah. next week. However, <laughs> he shakes his hand, gives him a low blow, and then he kisses him on the cheek. Uh, so we are setting up Tommaso Ciampa, Tony D'Angelo at Stand and Deliver, although Ciampa not doing a lot of standing last night after he was kicked in the groin. because he was Did he deliver? Yeah. <laughs> not, he he delivered about as much as uh, as Veer has delivered recently. Ten four. All right, carry on. How did that go? Uh, yeah. So uh, anyway, we uh, would have uh, Indy Hartwell going up against uh, Persia Parada. This is another notable fact here. Um, one of the only matches I've ever seen where the two opponents actually walk to the ring together. That's right. You know, we're having a little bit of a feud between two tag team partners. Uh, they have one set of entrance music, and they actually walk to the ring together. Um, we Here. were ultimately – yeah, yeah, they walked to the ring together. I don't know if they were short on time or what, but uh, we did not have separate entrances last night. That's the first time I've ever seen that. I mean, we've had tag teams wrestle each other and stay tag teams after. The Usos, the Steiners, the – you know, we've had teams wrestle each other, but they get separate entrances. Yeah. This would be a really quick match. Uh, Indy Hartwell getting the victory. Duke Hudson appeared, and uh, that would of course Did you make bring out, with out both of them. That would that would of course bring out Sexy Dexy, and uh, Indy would get the victory in, in Meathead. We didn't talk about this off air. We didn't talk about this in our uh, in our briefing prior to the show. But what resulted after this Meathead was a smooch off. What? Yes, what, yes. I, what I show think, are we watching? I think Duke Hudson took <laughs> he took the initial and the initiative. He in, in Persia started uh, in a nice little lip lock, 
And then Indy and Sexy Dexy countered that with a lip lock. Uh, this would then result in Indy <laughs> in Indy mounting Sexy Dexy. This what? would be followed. <laughs> This will be followed by uh, (laughs) Persia mounting Duke (laughs) Duke Hudson. And and the the finale would be actually Indy ripping off the shirt of one sexy Dexy in the ring. Meathead, you really, the first thing you need to do when you get back to your. uh, to your, your home studio is you, you need to pull this thing up on the DVR because I, I don't think describing this does it uh, enough justice here. See, here's the thing. Um, you know, you told me that it was going to feel like a fever dream. You told me that you can, you think, or I'm going to think that you're fucking with me. Come yeah. on, man. What is this stuff? Yeah. Yeah. No, this is, uh, this, all of this happened. Um, and here, here's the thing. I, I've been saving this for last. This is a little bit out of order, but I, I think you'll greatly appreciate this too. We did have Tiffany Stratton uh, versus Saray. Now, Tiffany you said Stratton. Tiffany straddled too? What the hell no, 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 are you no, no, no. talking about? Se- separate thing. She, she was not in this segment. She was not in this segment. Okay. She was in a segment with Saray. Uh, Tiffany Stratton, she figured out the secret with Char- with Saray. She actually attacked Saray backstage before Saray transformed. So, Saray oh. did not transform last night. So, she was actually able to make quick work of a non transformed Saray. <laughs> no <Okay. laughs> I know I know this sounds like uh Meathead was not able to to catch all of this, so I'm just making a bunch of stuff up, but I promise you this is exactly the way everything happened. Wow. And then we had the main event, right? Yep, we had the main event. Uh Ziggler getting the queen the the uh clean win over LA Knight. Uh Breaker no. Breaker uh showed back up in his challenger. And uh, was able to hop in the ring, confront Dolph Ziggler to set up a match between those two for Stand and Deliver. That's seemingly going to be the main event for Stand and Deliver, Braun Breaker versus Dolph Ziggler. You know what? I'm okay with that match. Um, I think it's really a perfect, you know, they call it into business, the rub. I think it's the perfect rub to have Dolph Ziggler work a main event with Braun Breaker. And, you know, (coughs) really in front of a WrestleMania crowd that, you know, they're going to be at the American Airlines Center, so that could be 20,000 people. So, uh, Meathead, are you, uh, are you having uh, automotive vehicle uh, issues? I'm looking at you, and you're sitting still. Is everything okay? Do you need, do you need roadside assistance? No, depends. <laughs> Fantastic. Well, we will at Meathead get taken care of whatever uh, he needs to get taken care of. Join us tonight when we discuss uh, Thunder Rosa becoming the new AEW champion in a steel cage. <laughs> well, you know, that's the way we see it, and it could go differently, but that's the way we see it. When I said see it, you see how I put my glasses on. Oh, no, I stopped looking at you. I'm, I'm, I've gotten my device up to my ear now. I stopped looking at you. Um, but yeah, you got your glasses. You look, you look good in a pair of glasses, Meathead. There you go. They're not for driving, though. Fantastic. Well, join us uh, tomorrow when we break down all of the exciting events of AEW Dynamite. Until then, we will talk to you later. Bye-bye.